Hey guys, welcome to the video, Salt here. Today we're going to be going over the Warframe Gara Prime. So Gara Prime was suggested to us by commenter Project Sunny 309 and that's why we're doing her today. Uh, this is actually my second video on Gara Prime today. So the first video I put out at 4 a.m. Uh, and it was because I spent all day yesterday uh, researching and going over Gara, and I was not happy all day long with my Gara build. I thought it was horrible damage, and so I kept tweaking it. I kept tweaking it. I, I watched every Gara video out there from friggin' however many years ago that are even outdated. And, uh, you know, after an incredible amount of time researching and tweaking the build, I had Gara. And at 4 a.m., I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do the video, and I'm going to get it out there, uh, which is. A great thought, although I was really tired at that time, and I completely forgot to go over uh, the stat stick for Gara, which is a huge part of Gara. And so I, I had added it as a pinned comment, but I didn't really like that. And so I decided to redo the video. Uh, we also have a little bit of a change on the build that I did from 4 a.m. this morning. And uh, it was because of a suggestion by one of the commenters, the Wizard, uh, on using one of Gara's augments. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can make room for that augment, and uh, on hindsight, we can take off Equilibrium and we can fit that augment on, because the, the build isn't, it's energy hungry, but we have enough energy to live without Equilibrium. And so you can make that uh, switch using that augment. Now, there's some good and bad things about the augment, and, and it's one of the reasons why I didn't initially have that augment on the Gara is because it's not as good as you would think it is. However, um, in hindsight, like I said, we don't technically really, really need equ equilibrium. So you can make room for, for that augment. So, all right, let me stop running my mouth on that one there. Let's keep going here. So we have the top commenter and the first commenter of the last video, which is Adam 37. Okay. Let's go into Gara here. And we're going to be going over her abilities first before we go over the mods. So let me get my book here. And we're going to go over her passive, which is uh, a chance to create a radial blind lasting 10 seconds when Gara casts abilities. This also is going to have a, a pity system built into it where anytime this does not trigger when you cast an ability, you get 20% added to that 15%. So it's, it's going to get more and more likely that this is going to happen. Okay, Shattered Lash is going to be Gara's one. And there is a lot to Shattered Lash. Let me switch to the page in my notebook that I had sh Shattered Lash on. So you're going to thrust or sweep your glass. So there's two ways to cast Shattering Lash or Shattered Lash. There is tapping the one, which is going to do the puncture version, and holding the one, which is going to do the slash version. Okay, let me continue on here. So you're either going to uh, deal puncture if thrusted or slash if swept and knock down enemies. Damage is affected by ability strength and it's also affected by melee damage mods, elemental damage mods, and physical elemental damage mods on your melee weapon, as well as combo count of your melee weapon. Certain weapon traits, like Incarnate Evolutions and Kuva and Tenant Progenitor bonuses, also affect the damage. And there are also some other melee mods that affect Shattered Lash. However, I would suggest not using them unless you're using some weird janky way to increase the, uh, the base stats. So that's going to be crit mods and status chance mods. And it's because the base crit chance and base status chance of Shattered Lash is 0%. Okay. And then we're going to have the synergy to Shattered Lash, which is very important because Gara, all of her abilities are tied together like a web. So your melee is going to affect Shattered Lash. Shattered Lash then indirectly affects the four, which then indirectly affects the two. So everything is kind of tied in together here. And so the synergistic effects uh, are very important. So Casting Shattered Lash on your four, which is Gara's glass wall, which is called Mass Vitrify. So casting Shattered Lash on your four will cause it to explode, dealing damage. Okay, now we have the next synergistic part of that combo, 
which is if Splinter Storm, which is the two, is active and within the explosion radius, 50% of your barrier's damage will be added to Splinter Storm's damage per second. Okay, so we haven't got the Splinter Storm yet, but Splinter Storm is a buffer debuff that you put on enemies that is like a, a dot. So 50% of the damage from that, that one and four explosion will be added to the two's dot. Okay, so that's it for the one. Let me go to my next page here, which is going to have the two for Splinter Storm. Okay, Splinter Storm can be cast on yourself, on an ally, on an enemy, or on a defense target. This is going to deal damage per second and push away enemies. So something important about this that I just kind of wanted to add uh, because it pushes away enemies, if you're going to use my video as just more of an informational and you're not going to copy it and you're going to do your own thing and you want to do a melee build, be careful with large amounts of range on Splinter Storm because it's going to push enemies away. So for a melee build, you either want to go for a melee weapon that has a lot of range to, to hit them past its push radius or you don't want to go with as much range as we're going to go. So one or the other. Okay, continuing on with Splinter Storm here. Uh, friendlies receive up to 90% damage reduction. That damage reduction affects both uh, health and shields, which is really nice. And def if you put this on a defense target, he can only get up to 50% damage reduction, which is still nice. He just doesn't get the full 90. And enemies receive damage vulnerability up to a certain amount, uh, depending on your strength. Casting her four mass vitrify will refresh the duration of Splinter Storm. Okay, so anytime you cast four, it's going to recast a Splinter Storm for you. Now, that, that's important because, like we were saying before, the one and the four combo, 50% of that damage is added to Splinter Storm. And while Splinter Storm is, is up, anytime you press four, it just recasts your two for you. If So your two is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger, and it's going to get to the point where you can actually just kind of walk into enemies and they'll just instantly die. Now... If for some reason the two falls off, if for some reason like you walk into a nullifier bubble, or if I don't, I don't know why you would stop casting Mass Vitrify for like 30 seconds, but if for some reason you didn't cast Mass Vitrify for like 30 seconds, or if you walk into a to a nullifier bubble, the two will fall off, and you're gonna have to kind of start from scratch to for where you had like its its huge damage numbers at. So Gara is like a, she's a scaling Warframe. She starts kind of mediocre and she's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger to the point where she's like starting to one-shot dudes by just walking into them. Okay, uh, let's go over the three now. It's going to be Roar. Roar's multiplicative damage increase. This works on both weapons and abilities. Now there is another really good option over Roar with Terrify. Terrify is a full armor strip. Between Roar and Terrify, if you were just to compare them one to one, I would probably say that Terrify is probably stronger than Roar. Full armor strip is probably stronger, well, it is stronger, than just a multipl multiplicative damage increase. Uh, why am I not using Terrify? And, and this is not to say you can't use Terrify. You can use Terrify, but let me explain why, why I'm not using it. So the, the whole combo with Gara Prime using the four and the one, the four and the one, that's your whole thing, is kind of energy hungry. And if you're going to use Terrify, now you're basically adding a third ability into your combo. Because, you you know, Roar is an ability you just cast once, and you only have to cast it once every 40 seconds. It just stays up. You can't do that with Terrify. You have to keep recasting it to keep reapplying uh, those armor strips to enemies. And so Terrify basically becomes part of your 4-1 combo, where, you know, maybe it's like 3-4-1 or, or, or whatnot. And... The four and the one combo is already energy hungry, and now with Terrify, it's even more energy hungry. Again, it's not saying that you can't use Terrify, but you know how I, I said in the beginning we made room for Shattering Storm by removing Equilibrium? If you're going to use Terrify, you need Equilibrium. You, you don't have this room, so you'd have to maybe put Shattering Storm over Prime Continuity and then use your Archon Shards for duration instead, possibly. But um, so, so Terrify, you're going to have to start keeping in mind the huge energy consumption of it, and it may change your build because of that. Roar is not as strong as Terrify, but it, it's close, it's up there, it's still very powerful, and it's very 
energy economic as well, because it's just one cast every 40, 40 seconds. Okay, enough with uh, Roar. Let's go on to the four here. Mass Vitrify. This is the one that everyone knows for Gar. This is the Ring of Glass. So you're going to create a Ring of Glass that expands outwards. And then repressing the four will stop the expansion and finish the ability cast. So while that ring is expanding outwards, enemies that contact that expanding glass barrier will become crystallized. Crystallized enemies receive a percentage of damage vulnerability and they contribute part of their health and shields to the health of that glass wall, which is kind of funny. Um, and that, that glass wall, that little barrier, it has 12 segments. So it doesn't just all break at once if an enemy does damage to it. Like there's little segments to it. Uh, so each segment has its own like little little uh, health pool and stuff. Okay, that's enough with the abilities there. Before we go uh, into the mods, I want to go into the simulacrum and I just want to show the basic Gara uh, playstyle. And I also just wanted to show Shatter Shatterstorm, the good and the bad, because it's not all good. And that's why originally it didn't make it on the build, because um, it's not as strong as you would think it is, but it's still worth it, especially in hindsight that we don't technically need equilibrium because we're... You know, we have enough energy, uh, so you could fit Shattered Storm here. The multitude of creatures you have immortalized would cry out in thanks. Alrighty. So again, everything with Gara just kind of um, is like a web. They're all affecting each other. So you're going to start by pressing your two, which is going to put that buff on yourself. It's going to be that, that glass buff that gives you 90% damage reduction. And then you're going to press your four. Press it again to stop the cast. And then with your one, you're going to break that glass wall. So I'm going to Press or hold my one. I like to hold it. I like to do the slash uh, variant of it. And that's what it's going to do. All these glass shards are, that are flying around the enemies is because of the augment we're going to use. And I'll, I'll explain that there. I think my little uh, Chungus rocked his mecha, his mecha set. I, thought, I saw everything die there. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was not Gara. That was actually the, the Kuro, sadly. <laughs> so, uh, okay, let me spawn some, some more dudes here. So this is the reason at first I didn't really like my build for Gara, and it was because, you know, if, if I'm doing this here, I'm not super happy with this damage. You know, it feels like I'm tickling these enemies. They're on the ground, but I mean, look at their health pools. They're still pretty high there. So... I had to, to, to do a lot to um, to tweak the build, and I also had to kind of come to an understanding with Gara that she is not immediately very powerful. She needs to scale up because of her mechanics. So if you look at in the bottom right, do you see that? Let me, least, let me see what it says now. Do you see that 456k damage buff in the bottom right of my screen? That is the two. So now, because it's a little bit stronger, I can almost walk into these enemies, and they're going to take more damage than the nuke I've been doing. Now that, that nuke will get stronger and stronger, but let me um let me explain some things too, especially about this augment here. Because the augment is good, but it's not as good as, as you would think. So Shattered Storm. When Gara breaks her mass vitrify ring with shattered lash, enemies struck by the glass suffer splinter storm at 100 percent strength. Which is this. This is the one that scales up to, you know, quadrillion damage and one shots level cap enemies, you know. But the thing with um, Shattered Storm is it is applying a new Splinter Storm to those enemies. It's not transferring over your Splinter Storm that might be at, you know, 10 billion damage. It's transferring over a brand new Shattered Storm. So those enemies aren't going to just insta-die. So the benefit that you actually get with Shattered Storm is the damage vulnerability. Remember... If you cast it on yourself, you get the damage reduction, but the enemies get damage vulnerability. So 
when you cast it on an enemy, he will be vulnerable to, to new damage uh, being caused. So kind of like the second, you know, the, the second attack will now cause a lot more damage to him. So that's why it's not an absolute must to have the augment on your build. If you didn't want the augment, you could still just use equilibrium. However, uh, you know, I did like the suggestion from the wizard. And I just wanted to uh, kind of point that out and go over it. I think it's it's good enough to make it on the build because in hindsight, we don't technically need equilibrium. Like we have enough energy generation without it. But if you if you wanted equilibrium, because equilibrium is, is very powerful. If you wanted equilibrium, um, let me get out of here and go back to the orbiter here now. You could not use the augment and just use equilibrium in that slot. That's fine. Alrighty, I think we can go over the mods finally. So we're going to start with Primed Redirection for 180% shield capacity. This is going to bring our shields to a little bit over 1,000, which is going to be important. So I did uh, a few different things with this build. I, I had built it out for health. I had built it out for shields. There are people that play shield gating garas, and that's fine too. But why do I think Primed Redirection is going to be the best version of the Gara, it's going to be because of the melee arcane that we're going to use. So if instead we had used Umbral Vitality, which is what I had here originally, because we had two Umbral mods, right? We had Umbral Vitality and Umbral Intensify. And if you use Umbral Vitality, it actually boosts up Umbral Intensify by 11%. We get about a thousand health, a little bit over a thousand health. If you use Prime Redirection, we get a little bit over a thousand shields. And that 90% damage reduction works on both health and shields, which is really nice. So in hindsight, it doesn't really matter what you go. You can go health or shields because it, that damage reduction works on both of them. But you have to consider what else do you get out of it. If I go health here instead, if I go with Umbra Vitality here instead, I get 11% ability strength, which is nice. Okay, but what do I get out of the shield? So what do I get out of a thousand shields? Well, let, let's go into the melee real quick that we're going to use. And it doesn't matter. It does matter what melee you use. But if you choose to use another melee, it just use this arcane. So we're going to go into the upgrade screen here. And we're going to look at melee retaliation, the arcane. <clears throat> and we're going to gain 30% melee damage for every 200 current shields up to 420%. Okay, so we have 1,000 shields. So we're going to get five instances of of this 30% melee damage. So that's going to be 150% melee damage. So that is what you get out of using shields instead of health. If you use health, you get 11% ability strength. If you use shields, you get 150% melee damage. Uh, you can argue in the comments, what do you feel like is better? Do you feel like 11% ability strength is better or is 150% melee damage is better? I'm going to think that the, the melee damage is better, but it's, it's probably questionable. Let me know what you think. So that's why I'm going to go with Primed Redirection here. The next slot, we're going to be going for Umbral Intensify, which is a 44% ability strength increase. The next slot here, we're going to go for Transient Fortitude, which is a 55% ability strength increase. This unfortunately does decrease your uh, duration by 27%, but we're going to make up for that in other ways. Uh, duration is important on Gara, so you don't you don't just want to run with negative duration. You, you just uh, So we're going to boost it up with, with other ways there. Primed Flow is going to increase our energy pool, which is important because uh, Gara is a spammer. She spams the 4-1 combo, 4-1, 4-1, 4-1. And if you go with Terrify, that's even more energy that you're going to need. So you, Prime Flow is a must. In the next slot, we have Prime Continuity. Prime Continuity recoups some of that duration that we lost for Transient Fortitude. And it gives us a little bit extra as well, which is nice. This slot here is the flex slot, Shattered Storm. So you can either go with Shattered Storm or you can go with Equilibrium. I had originally had Equilibrium here. I thought it made sense on the build, but then in further testing, I felt like you don't always need Equilibrium. You have enough um, uh, energy generation uh, happening, like, you know, with a with flow, and then you're using an Archon Shard that gives you more... Um, energy per, per orb so like you don't technically super super need equilibrium but then you can make the same case for shattered storm too you don't technically need shattered storm either so choose what you like here 
You can use equilibrium for just more con uh, a more consistent time where you're not worried too much about energy. Or you can use Shattered Storm, which is going to give damage vulnerability to those enemies for the second cast, right? The first one applies it, the second one takes it into account. Okay, uh, in the next two slots here, we have our range mods, two range mods. Uh, the reason we're going kind of crazy with range is because Gara's a nuke frame, and you want to be hitting basically everything in a tile set. So to do that, you need to up her range. So we're going to be using Overextended for a large ability range increase of 90%, and Stretch for a 45% ability range increase. With Overextended, unfortunately, we, we lose 60% ability strength to be able to get that huge range increase. Uh, but we have a lot of ways to get back uh, ability strength, so that's fine. Okay, in the top two mod slots, we have Steel Charge. Steel Charge is going to be 60% melee damage. Remember, melee damage uh, affects the stat stick, which affects the one, which indirectly affects the four, which indirectly affects the two. So melee damage kind of indirectly affects everything. <laughs> And then in the uh, Exilus slot here, there are a few options. You can go Power Drift for 15% ability strength. You can go Cunning Drift for 15% ability range. Or you can go Prime Surefooted for just no no self-stagger, no no knockdown. Um, you're an ability caster, so I feel like Prime Surefooted is footed not super needed. Like, you're not going to be knocking yourself over. Although there is a little bit of a ramp-up period with Gara when you first start the mission that you can knock yourself over with. But I don't know if that would really justify using Prime Surefooted just for the first, like, 45 seconds of the game. So I would say either Power Drift or Cunning Drift. I'm going to lean Power Drift to kind of try to recoup some of that ability strength that we lost with Overextended. All right, in the Arcane slots here, we're going to start with Malt, Malt Augmented. This is going to be a ability strength uh, arcane that just scales up to 60% ability strength once you get a certain amount of uh, kills. Arcane power ramp is a 36% ability strength increase. So how arcane power ramp works, because there's a lot of wording to it, is you can't recast an ability twice. So as long as you don't recast an ability twice, it stays at four stacks, which is the full 36%. If you uh, cast an ability twice, it's, it goes back down to one stack for 9%. Now, the cool thing with Gara is you never press the same ability twice. You're you're doing the, the four, one, four, one, four, one, and then you're recasting Roar any, anytime it goes down. And even if you had Terrify, you're still not casting Terrify twice. You're probably going like three, four, one, three, four, one. So you're never really casting an ability twice there. I also tested it with Mass Vitrify because Mass Vitrify, you have to press it to expand the ring, and then you have to press it again to stop the expansion. But that still only counts as one cast. So they, they took this into consideration. So Arcane Power Ramp still works with Mass, mass Vitrify. So that is just a simple 36% uh, damage increase. Uh, there's another popular Arcane that, like I said, I did a lot of research on Gara, so I know what everyone is using. So there's a popular one that people use called uh, Blade Charger. On a primary weapon kill, 30% chance for 300% melee damage. Powerful, 300% melee damage is really nice because melee damage affects, you know, everything. But but look at this, on a primary weapon kill. Okay, now we haven't gotten to this yet, but we're going to be using a Hurris Kubro. The Hurris Kubro makes us invisible. That's a huge part of our survivability. A huge part of our survivability is being invisible. And to be invisible on the Hurris Kubro, you cannot use weapons. You can't shoot. Or, and you can't melee attack. If you do, you're going to go visible, and then eight seconds later, he'll make you invisible again. So Arcane Blade Charger makes you primary weapon kill uh, to maintain that buff. It's a good buff, but if you use this, you have to start going more into survivability. Because if you look at our build here, yes, we have a 90% damage reduction. But trust me, I, I play, I've played Warframe for a very long time, and I play damage reduction builds 99% of the time. I do not like shield gating builds unless I have to do level cap, but I play n damage reduction builds 99% of the time. And I know for damn sure 1,000 survivability pool, whether it's health or shield, is nothing. Um, you can get away with 1,000 when you first start Steel Path, but a, a little bit into it, this is nothing. This is one or two hits and you're dead. Uh, 
even even low in steel path you need to have a pool of two to two and a half thousand uh with 90 percent damage reduction for it to be viable and even then once you're at like four or five thousand leveled enemies it's it doesn't work anymore you need to go to shield gate so with redirection this is just good enough to let you get your ramp up so that you can go into your invisibility with your Hurris Kubro. That is, that's what our build focuses on. We're half of our, well, more than half of our survivability is the invisibility. And if you choose to go with that blade charger here instead, you're primary attacking, which is making you visible. And so now you're having to spend mod slots to get this to look more like two, two and a half thousand, which is not really doable on shields. You would have to spend two or three shield mod mods to uh, achieve that. So you would have to switch to a health build. And um, that would require you to use Umbral Vitality here. And it would require you to use one of your Arcanes for Arcane Blessing. That's the only way uh, you you work with a 90% damage reduction on Steel Path Endurance. So for that reason, we don't use that 300% that, that melee damage uh, Arcane there. It just, it reduces our survivability too much. And then to recoup that survivability is too many mod slots and too many arcane slots. Okay. So that's the build for Gara there. What I want to do now is I want to go over some externals for Gara. I'm going to try not to forget the ceramic dagger uh, this time when we get to it. So <laughs> let's go over the um, Archon charts first. So there's two different ways you can build out. Actually, there's probably more than two ways you can build the Archon charts. So how I have it built out is 75% effectiveness on energy orbs, which is really nice. I think that every Gara build should have at least one of these little uh, yellow ones for, for more energy whenever you pick up a, a blue orb. And I have four red shards for ability strength. The other really good way to build this is like this, except instead of four shards for ability strength, you use two shards for ability strength and you use two shards for casting speed. And it's because the four, that little glass ring that goes out, it's kind of long to cast. And so casting speed helps it a lot. Now, the reason I, I'm going to try to explain why I don't think casting speed is needed is you're, I, I don't actually know if I said that, said this with the four, but when you can't, when you're casting the four, you're invulnerable. So you can't be killed. So it doesn't matter if you cast it fast or slow. And the faster you cast it, the faster you can spam um, which is not super needed on Gara because uh, you don't want to be spending a crap load of energy spamming the 4-1 combo. And you're going to need time for enemies to actually... Because all the enemies are going to be dead. So you're going to need some time for those enemies to re-enter that explosion radius. And so I don't feel like casting speed is super needed, but you could, you could definitely make a case for it because the 4 is a long cast. And uh, like I was saying um, before... You could also consider going with one yellow like I have here and using all four of these for duration instead. If, let's say you wanted to use Equilibrium and Shattered Storm, you can do that. You can have Equilibrium here and you could put Shattered Storm over Prime Continuity, but you need to make up for this Prime Continuity slot, which is 55 duration. So you need to use all four of those Archon Shards for duration at that point. So you you can uh, that that's up to you. If you still want to use equilibrium and shattered storm, then you would use all four of these uh, red slots for duration instead. Okay, um, so we're gonna go over the primary here, but before we do, I want to because it's, the reason we're choosing the ogress is uh, because of the ceramic dagger. So let me properly go over the ceramic dagger this time. <laughs> So Gara has a pseudo exalted weapon, which is her one, her shattered lash. What that means is that a stat stick can affect shattered lash. And in this case, that stat stick is a melee weapon. Okay. So that's the reason we're building out the melee weapon as a stat stick. There are a few good options for stat sticks. You don't always need the ceramic dagger. There's the jaw sword. There's... I mean, honestly, you can you can even use just any melee weapon as a stat stick. But I'm going to explain why I believe the Ceramic Dagger is the one for this build, especially since we're using the Hurris Kubro, which makes us invisible. Okay? And it comes down to the Ceramic Dagger Evolutions. So, if we look at the Ceramic Dagger Evolutions here, 
And we look at this first one, Gun and Blade. The first part of it is increases base damage by plus 100. Whatever, that I don't believe that even affects the, uh, the stat stick. But the bottom part of it, on a primary kill, you get plus one initial combo, and it stacks 100 times. So, like we were saying with the stat stick, combo multiplier actually does affect your stat stick, and it affects the one. And so combo multiplier is very important. Um, the unfortunate thing with combo multiplier is that usually, like if you weren't using the ceramic dagger to gain combo multiplier, you need to be whacking things. And if you whack things, then Hurus Kubro does not make you invisible. So how do we get a increased combo without whacking things? It's through the ceramic dagger. And it's because of two evolutions. It's this one here, Gun and Blade. This stacks 100 times after you get 100 kills. And then the, the third evolution slot here, we have the middle evolution, which is Adept Reflexes, which is plus 20 initial combo. So the 100 initial combo plus the, the 20 initial combo gives us a times 7 melee multiplier, combo multiplier. Okay, the, the last evolution doesn't matter. Pick, you know, roll a dice, pick whatever the hell you want there. It, it literally doesn't matter. But the, the, this one here, the initial combo here, and then the initial combo here does matter. This is going to get you into a times seven. Now, is times 12 better than times seven? Yes. The unfortunate thing is that times 12 means that you can't use a ceramic dagger, or you could, but you have to actually whack with it. But times 12 means that you actually have to whack with that weapon. Um, or use the Rauta to increase your combo count, which is also going to make you visible. So you would be doing more damage with times 12, but now you're visible. Now you have to invest more into survivability. And because of that, you may be losing out on ability strength mods or arcanes that you didn't have to use previously. So for that reason, our build just stays at a times seven combo with the... Uh, ceramic dagger incarnate we just stay at time seven and we don't worry about it okay and this is where i actually forgot to do the ceramic dagger last time i actually have to go into upgrade and show this off here okay so there's two different ways to cast gar as one you can tap it which throws like a little glass shard out like in front of her and you can hold it which does a slash the tap the the thrown shard is puncture and the hold of the slash is slash you have to decide what you want to do if you like to tap cast it with puncture then you need to build for puncture if you like to hold cast it for slash you should build for slash um i'm going to build for slash i i literally don't know the difference people are saying slash is better than puncture the weapon has a base of uh, a zero status chance, so it probably doesn't matter. It, it likely just comes down to enemy uh, vulnerabilities. Like if you look at the star chart, you can look at, at vulnerabilities and invulnerabilities on the, uh, or resistances, I should say, on the uh, uh, the star chart there to, like, to see. And so like Slash is probably the best. So that's why I've built for Slash here. But if you build for Puncture, just make sure that you need to use Puncture mods, okay? So... Before I go over all of them, I'm just going to go over the last three. So, I am going to be holding to cast it, which is going to be the slash. And so, all of the physical damage mods need to be slash. I have buzz kill for 120 slash. I have jagged edge for 90 slash. And I have carnus mandible for 90 slash. If for some reason you wanted to build for puncture, which is completely fine, just type in puncture and do the exact same except with the puncture variants. So you see how Buzzkill is 120 slash? Switch it to Augur Strike, which is 120 puncture. Switch Jagged Edge to the 90 puncture one, which is... Sundering? Yeah, Sundering. And then Carnus Mandible to Juggalus Barbs. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have one of these. Okay, I thought it like lagged out on me for a second there. So this is how you would build for puncture. You just use these three instead. Let me uh, put these back before I completely forget. Okay, um, so let's go over the other mods here. Remember, uh, melee damage, elemental damage, and physical elements are what affects the one. Uh, or the most, I should say. There are other things that affect it, but they affect it like garbage. So, we're going to use Prime Pressure Point for melee damage. We're going to use Spoiled Strike for melee damage. 
We're going to use North Wind for 90% cold. We're going to use Molten Impact for 90% heat. And we're going to use Primed Fever Strike for 165 Toxin. Now, you may be wondering, well, what is the best elements? It doesn't matter. It literally does not matter. I can flip these around. I can put them wherever the hell I want. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing that matters is the number. So 90 is a high number, and so I have it on here. But Prime Fever Strike with 165 it is, is an even higher number, and so that's why I would have it on here. So the number for the elements are the only thing that matters. And then we have our physical mods here, right? We have our slash, slash, slash. Or you would go puncture, puncture, puncture if you decided to do the tap cast. The stance does not matter whatsoever. So you could just randomly pick whatever the hell you want. And the exit list doesn't really matter. I picked Dispatch Overdrive because if I want to go into Incarnate mode and I heavy attack to go into it, I'll have a little tiny movement speed buff. That's the only reason. There's... I spent a Forma just for that reason, which is probably not worth it. <laughs> but you you know, you know, can decide if, if you want to do that or not. Or you can just leave this empty, honestly. And then in the Arcane slot, again, melee retaliation, right? This is why we're, we're going with shields, because this is going to give us 150% melee damage. Okay, so that is how you build out the stat stick. Uh, again, just important to either go all in on Puncture or all in on Slash, depending if you want to... Uh, tap cast or hold cast. And remember, you can invert those controls in the settings too. Okay, so let's go back to the primary here, the Ogress. Remember, the Ceramic Dagger, to get that 100 initial combo, we need to get 100 kills quickly. And to with our primary weapon. And we don't want to be in our primary weapon for very long because we're not building into survivability. We only have redirection and, and that's about it. So uh, our survivability is being invisible. So we don't want to be shooting our primary weapon for very long. So we need to get those 100 kills as quick as humanly possible. And there's a few trains of thought for this. There is like the obvious train of thought, which is, well, I'm going to pick the biggest, baddest weapon to get those 100 kills as quick as humanly possible, which would, which would be the Torrid. You would pick the Torrid and Karnan in that case. Okay. And then there's the other train of thought that I'm going to go with, which is I'm going to, I want to get... Uh, a lot of kills as quick as possible, but I also want to CC enemies so they don't shoot at me because I have kind of mediocre survivability. And the Ogress is really good at that because it has a uh, specific augment called Nightwatch Napalm, which creates a field of fire which continues to crowd control enemies. So not only is it an AoE weapon that gets a lot of kills, but it also continues to crowd control uh, enemies uh, while it's on the ground there. So that's the train of thought I'm going to be going with there, but the 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 Torrid Incarnate is also completely fine. Just make sure you knock out those 100 kills, get that 100 initial combo as quick as possible, and then bam, go go into doing your 4-1 your combo and your dude will make you invisible. Your Harris Kubra will make you invisible. All right, the secondary doesn't really matter what you pick. Uh, you're not really going to be using your secondary anyway. So I would suggest picking a utility option if you really even want to pick a, an, an option here. So the best utility options are going to be either the Azima or the Grimoire. Um, the Grimoire, it doesn't really matter how you build it out. It just matters that you pick this mod right here, Zada Invocation. So whenever you alternate fire your Grimoire, you're, it's going to create this little ball and it's going to like go forward. And depending on however many enemies it hits, it doesn't even have to kill them. It just has to hit them. You're going to get one energy per second. So this can be, and it stacks 10 times. So this can be uh 10? Yeah, 10 energy per second for 20 seconds. So it's like a little energy regen um, if you really need it. Now, you don't want to be casting this willy-nilly because this will take you out of stealth. You're only going to be using this in the worst case scenarios when you really need energy. Uh, like I was saying, the Azima is also a pretty decent option. It's just a little turret that uh, shoots out. It's a little pistol that shoots out its magazine as a turret. And that turret just sits in place for 30 seconds and spins around. And uh, you and, and it applies whatever the hell you put on it, right? You could put viral on it and it'll apply viral. Or you can put um, heat or electric on it to crowd control enemies. Uh, I think the Grimoire is the better option because the Azima, you don't really want to be going out of invisible just to... Just the crowd control enemies that kind of like defeats the purpose. So Ceramic Dagger, we actually went over this time. And so now we can go over the 
focus schools here. And uh, I think Xenoric is going to be the best option. Xenoric is going to give you more energy anytime you pick up a bit, pick up an energy orb. Xenoric does not work with channeled abilities. However, we do not have channeled abilities, so this is perfect. All right, and then for the pet, we got Big Chungus, the Hurris Kubro. I just did a, a, a Kubro video on like every single Kubro in the game, and the Hurris is, is one of the videos. Uh, so I won't go too much into this. You could always watch the video if you if you want a more detailed uh, uh, video on the, the Hurris here. But the, the takeaway of the Hurris is that he has a specific Hurris mod called Stalk that makes you invisible as long as you do not attack, right? You can't be shooting, you can't be melee whacking, but you can be ability spamming. You can use as many abilities as you want, spamming those things, killing as many enemies as you want. So that's where the Hurris is really powerful for ability frames. That invisibility has an eight second cooldown. So for some reason, if you do need to shoot, uh, it's fine. You're gonna, in eight seconds, you'll, you'll be invisible again. And the other cool thing too, is that he makes himself invisible as well. So he has pretty good survivability uh, while he's invisible too. And he can attack while he's invisible, which is really nice. So that is Gara. That's the combos for Gara. That's how to build Gara. That's how to build her weapons. That's the pet that you use with Gara. I'm going to be uh, going into a 10 minute Steel Path uh, mop mission and just kind of showing Gara off, explaining how she works. I'm, I'm sure you kind of get the gist of it though at this point. It's just that 4 1 combo. You press 2, hopefully once, because every time you press 4, it's just going to keep it up. You press Roar whenever it falls off, and then your whole gameplay is basically just 4 1, 4 1, 4 1. These are worthy foes. Underestimate them at your peril. Okay, so my, my first order of business is getting that 100 kills with my Ogres. That's my first order of business. I need to get this um, Ceramic Dagger. It ha it's at two times now, but I need to get it to seven times initial combo. That way it just sits at seven times all the time, and I never have to use a Ceramic Dagger again. Unless I want to like, do a heavy attack to activate Incarnate. That's the only reason. Okay, so that's my first order of business is to get 100 kills with this Ogres. So I'm going to start. I'm going to put my two on, which is my 90% damage reduction. And I'm going to get some ogre shots out here. Create some fire fields. I can put roar on if I want, because roar will affect the uh, ogres. may need to recast uh, two when it falls off, just because we're not going to be doing the 4-1 combo right now until we uh, have that 100 kills. So once in a while, just double check your melee weapon and see what you're at for combo. So I check here, I'm at five times. I need a little bit more kills. Like I said, the Ogres also crowd controls enemies, so pretty decent for that. Let's see what I'm at. I'm at six times. A few more kills. That'll probably get us there. Seven times. Okay. So I'm going to press my two, and I'm going to start my, my gameplay here. And now I'm invisible. The Hurris has made me invisible because I'm no longer attacking with my Ogress. I'm just going to do my 4-1 my combo. Remember to either tap or hold one, depending on what you decided you want. If you want uh, puncture, it should be tap. If you want slash, it should be hold, unless you've inverted your controls. Something to know also about um, the four is that it explodes like on a horizontal plane. So you see how this is a two-story file set? I actually may want to jump in the air and then cast my four to create a larger uh, wall. That way, both the upper and the downstairs are on that horizontal plane. You know, or I could just move over to a, a single uh, floor tile set, which is fine too. I could like go into it. This is a really good. Oh no, this is not the one. But a single floor tile tile set would also work. You know, fine. 
And uh, don't be like me and forget your roar. Make sure you remember that you have roar and keep it up. And don't fall in holes. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. I don't want to. I don't want to do this ten minutes on this tile set. Come on, let, let me get. Let me get to a better area here. I don't want to. I don't want to have to keep like jumping in the air to make a, a really tall uh, wall. Give me an easy tile set to do this on. My first video had such a good tile set. This one's going to have garbage tile sets, isn't it? Probably just gonna stay in this weird room right here. This is like the best tile set I've uh, encountered. I, I mean, I guess this one's a good tile set. It's just annoying with this uh, two floors. Have to keep jump casting everything. I guess I could sit on this branch. Although I gotta collect my energy orbs. If you're not using equilibrium, you do have to really be uh, sure to be picking up your energy orbs. And not be lazy about it. I can be lazy sometimes and, and forget to actually like run around and pick up my energy orbs. Uh, which is fine if you're using Equilibrium, but when you're not using Equilibrium, um, you really need to be making sure to pick up your energy orbs. We'll just do five minutes. We'll do five minutes. I have a really bad tile set here. And I think you guys kind of understand the gist of this of this combo here. I don't want to jump cast my four and my one for friggin' ten minutes straight. Oh no, we have Malice. He's going to keep teleporting me, isn't he? All right, we're at five minutes. Let's let's run and uh, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to kill Malice, aren't I? All right, I'm next to you, Malice. Stop teleporting me. All right, there we go. We cannot blame these creatures. So five minutes, we got 784 kills, which is pretty much in line with the um uh, the first video I did. The first video I did in 10 minutes, we got about 14 to 1500 kills. So that that's about the same uh you know kill number there. Shut your ass up, Vor. Shut your ass up. Alright, let's uh go back here and that that's pretty much it for for Gara. That's how you build Gara out. That's how uh that's all the externals that go along with Gara to make her the strongest she can be. Um you can consider using the augment the 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 Shatterstorm augment um for her if you want or you can use equilibrium instead. I'm kind of on the fence. I might actually go back to equilibrium. I just like the comfiness of the energy instead of like always being at like 150. Being at 150 all the time is a little bit uh scary. Like I'm always kind of running around looking for energy orbs like I'm a crackhead. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, you, you can use Equilibrium and Shatterstorm if you, uh, or, or that Augment, whatever that Augment is called, uh, if you use your Archon Shards for duration too. So you could always consider doing that as well. So that's it, guys. If you liked the video, consider giving it a like. If you haven't subbed yet, consider subbing or tell me what I can do to earn your sub. And again, a uh, special thank you for Wizward on the um, advice and on the information on uh, that Augment. So I appreciate that. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. All right.